So the next stand is, is a similar device to the contour. It's a braided 19 on mesh disc. We place it inside the aneurysm at the neck and the purpose is to support the coils. It consists of 64 wires. The sizes right now is seven, nine, 11 and 14 millimeter, the diameter. The 14 is just, uh, has been released a couple of months ago. Now we can deliver these devices up to 11 millimeters through an O21 microcatheter, but the 14 needs a bigger one. It needs an O27 and all my cases were done through a 27 because I didn't have access to these new uh, release devices. Uh, then when we place the next stent, we can either before or after place a O17 microcatheter either through or around the mesh to deliver the coils. So this is the beauty of this device that we deliver coils also in the sack of the aneurysm. So the device is retrievable, repositionable. We can play with it until we find the best position and we detach it electrically when we finish the treatment. So we keep it on the wire until the, uh, the aneurysm is fully packed and then we detach it afterwards. This is how it looks like. And this is the idea to cross the, the mesh with the microcatheter on the wire. But nowadays I prefer to put the microcatheter on the wire before to jail the tip of the microcatheter because it's much easier, much simpler. And this is the philosophy, how to fill the space uh, beyond the, uh, the device in the sack of the aneurysm with coils. Um, my first case was done in August 2017. And up to April this year, I treated 22 aneurysm in Odense. These are 21 in 21 patients. Um, you know, it was uh, these treatments, uh, the location of the aneurysms were around uh, all the uh, major uh, uh, locations of the aneurysm, eight MCA, seven basilary tip. This is the easiest to treat with this because they straight uh, um, access. Five ACOM, one PCOM and one superior cerebral artery aneurysm. This was a very big one. Uh, all of them were premedicated with antiplatelet drugs, and we measure the effect with Verify now in the morning after treatment. And I maintain the uh, platelet inhibition double for three months and uh, uh, salicyl additional for three months. So I am a little bit more conservative than, than 2.5. Um, so this is the very first case. This is the first in man or women, woman case. This is a basilary tip aneurysm. You see the neck was nine millimeter and it engaged the uh, right PCA, the orifice, it came from the sack. But the excess is, as, as I told you, it's very easy. I put the 27 microcatheter XT27 inside the, uh, the aneurysm. And then I place the device. This is the next stand here. You see the uh, lateral projection is easier to see. This is the assembly point where all the wires are connected to each other. And um, this is the angiogram. And after that, I crossed the, uh, the mesh and it was not easy. It was quite challenging and it was a little bit dangerous also. So after that, I realized it should be a better option. And then nowadays I always put a small microcatheter first and deploy the device afterwards. This is the first uh, coil. And it was easy to feel the aneurysm. Then uh, when the next end is detached, <coughs> you see uh, here, and this is the final angiogram. All the branches are open. And this is the follow-up at five months. What we see is that the right, the orifice of the right PCA is blocked, but the patient was asymptomatic. And of course, it was not a pathological finding. It just the, uh, the anatomy was remodeled because the right PC had um, uh, uh, fetal origin uh, from the carotid. So it was there and it was obviously normal flow in that. So this is a very good result uh, in my opinion that the, the aneurysm progressively thrombosed after five months. Still, the patient was still on, on uh, um, 
Solicine. And it is the same as Tufai told you that uh, these devices give you the option that uh, they can give you better results as to follow up. So my second case was a large MCA aneurysm, this one. The patient suffered subarachnoid hemorrhage in April 2017. This was a big uh, carotid aneurysm that I treated in the acute phase with uh, a huge uh, uh, penumbra coils. And this is the right MCA eight months later, we took back the patient. This is the 3D angiogram. This is the MCA. The aneurysm had a seven millimeter neck and there were small branches also. So this was a trifurcation at that point. Difficult to find a nice view of the aneurysm. Um, so the, uh, the device helped me to define the anatomy also. Here is the device inside the sac. This is the patient's shoulder because it was difficult to get the view. And what we can see here is that the device has similar flow diverter effect. This was a nine millimeter big device. So it slows down the flow of the placement and there is some stagnation in the sac also. This is important because even the, the, uh, the mesh is not as tight as the contour, but it has significant flow diverter effect. So again, to put a small 70 microcatheter through the mesh and back the aneurysm with coils, what you see here is that the, the uh, central part of the device that is difficult to pack, but we realized soon that it is not so important either because the mesh is so tight here that this portion will thrombose anyhow. So this is the final angiogram after a treatment. You see nice, uh, flow in the two uh, bifurcation branches. And um, this is the follow-up six months later, exactly the same, uh, totally occluded aneurysm and good flow in all the branches. This very same patient had another aneurysm on the left MCA, this small one. This is the big one treated, this was a rupture. And this one I wanted to treat at the same time here, the neck is very wide, it's almost five millimeter. So it is difficult to get any coil to stay here without uh, adjunctive device, even with a balloon can be difficult. And I try, I, I dis, uh, decided to place a stand here, but uh, the engineer, he was the inventor of the device. Uh, he, since he was here for the other aneurysm, he suggested to try to place an extent here in the aneurysm to see if it could work. And then I said, okay, let's try. So we put a seven millimeter next end. Here it's inside. It was a little bit challenging to get it in, in this uh, small aneurysm. And what we also see here, significant flow diverter effect with stagnation in the sac. And I put just one coil inside the sac because I was unable to pack more without, uh, uh, without uh, take too high risk. And I was not very happy with this packing density. Obviously, it, it's, you are not so proud. But when the patient came back, this is the final angiogram. After six months, to my surprise, the aneurysm is, was fully occluded. And the branch, the, the uh, temporal branch was open. So here, obviously, the, the flow diverter effect of the device helped to heal the aneurysm, which was not packed very well. So this was a very, very uh, uh, important message for me. And since then I realized I don't need to pack the aneurysm as tightly as otherwise. It's a big ACOM aneurysm. The neck is not very wide, but there were two, three branches coming from the neck. And this is a difficult case to treat without adjunctive device again. So I decided to place an extent here and call the aneurysm. Here, I already put the small catheter, the delivery catheter in the tip of the uh, distal portion of the aneurysm. And the device is here. And once it's inside, when it's open, then I pull back the device a couple of millimeter to seal the neck. And then I push the coil again the angiogram after the placement of the device at the neck shows that the, the flow inside the aneurysm is slower and the stagnation is 
bigger. And then I packed the aneurysm. And in this case, it was nine cores. Uh, and the, it seems that it is totally occluded. So the device is detached here. Final angiogram. All the branches are open here. And follow up, eight months, same. And this is the uh, cone down image. You see the neck is perfectly occluded. The whole aneurysm is gone. So it is very durable, good result again. Another challenging case, a wide neck, uh, right MCA aneurysm. What you can see here is it's a bifurcation aneurysm and the neck is not only wide in this uh, projection, but also the other projection. So here, even the extent could be a little bit difficult to, to occlude this aneurysm. And also it was very difficult to get a nice view. So finally, I found this one, which is an axial view. Uh, so that I had to, to uh, decline the patient's head also and tilt the machine as much as I could. And here you see the device placed at the neck. And the, here the philosophy is that to seal the neck, I have to place the device a little bit outside of the neck. So here is all the device look seemingly inside the MCA branch, but there is enough space for the blood here to pass by, by the device. And this will give me this kind of uh, secure packing of the branch, because now I know that everything, all the cores are behind the device. This is just one coil. You see here, and I put one more, and I finished. This is the final angiogram. And this is the follow-up at seven months. You see, even the coils are a little bit loose and just two coils. The aneurysm is perfectly occluded, but we could not get the same projection because the patient is awake. We cannot uh, decline uh, her head as much as we did at the time of the treatment. But this is, again, a proof that the device together with coils uh, they give uh, a very good flow diverter effect and uh, facilitate the thrombosis of the sac. A big uh, basilary tip aneurysm where the neck is also eight millimeter, both branches are partially coming from the sac. Here, the philosophy is the same, but it's a very easy case technically to treat. After placement of the device, you see that the flow diverter effect here is also significant, slow inflow, and the, the aneurysm is easy to pack with coils. This very small portion, I did not pack tightly because it was difficult to access, but I knew that I had a good chance that it would thrombose. And this patient just came back. This is the final angiogram for a week ago. This is the follow-up, seven months. What you see here is the left PCA, and also the cone down image shows that the aneurysm is completely occluded. So very good, durable result again. So summary, the device is easy to handle, deploy, detach, and gives excellent support to achieve high packing density. We know that high packing density is a key to get good long-term results in aneurysm treatment. Uh, I had no complications except one TIA. This was iatrogenic because I finished the uh, uh, antiplatelet agents too early. Uh, I got good immediate angiographic results. And I have two 12 follow-ups of these cases at six, eight months. I think these are quite early, but we did it because these are study cases. All of them showed excellent results and uh, many of them progressive thrombosis after stack. This is my advice that the double antiplatelet therapy is mandatory as for a treatment with stents or flow diverters. But since uh, this is a new treatment, maybe, maybe we can change this. Maybe we can have shorter. And I would like to show another couple of cases because we have treated other cases outside Odense uh, with this device, uh, six in Canada, two in Germany, two in Greece, and one in the US and Norway each. I would like to show you two cases of them. Uh, these have also given good results. Eight, eight uh, of them have been followed with um, uh, angiography, and there is just one small necrement. The rest is very well occluded. 
So this is a monster aneurysm, uh, which was found in Canada, in Edmonton. Uh, they have not uh, followed this patient or she didn't come to follow up. So it's a, obviously a previously coiled basilar tip aneurysm with a huge recurrence. And uh, this is not easy to treat because all the uh, PCAs are very, very small. You see here the right one. It's very difficult to place any stent. There were no, no um, beacons on each side. So our strategy was to fill the distal portion with coils and coming down closer to the neck, we placed the device, you see here the device, and finished the treatment, the packing as much as we could. This is the final angiogram after the treatment. And we have follow up at nine months. I would call it very good result after, after uh, all this huge uh, aneurysm. It's probably a minimal, minimal inflow, but I think it will be durable also a long time. And final case, this was a patient with multiple stroke, very difficult aneurysm due to the angulation. The stroke came from, from the uh, posterior circulation. So, so you see here, the, the neck is wider than uh, there is no, no way to get any coil inside. And also it's difficult to place stands here to keep both PCAs open. So the strategy here was to put the device something like here and push coils. But there were, this, this patient was treated in Norway. There was no uh, access to uh, neck stand. So we used contour, which is a similar, so it was an 11, this was the largest contour at that time, placed this in the aneurysm and packed the rest with coils. And this was the packing density that we ach achieved. Uh, not very good, but we could not pack any, any more coils. And this is the final uh, angiogram. I don't have any follow-up on these cases, uh, angiographic, but there are MR follow-ups and it shows good results. So, this was my experience. Thank you very much.